Hi, I'm Grant from Blackmagic Design and today we'd like to show you what's new at NAB 2016. This year we have some exciting new products and I'd love to be able to show them to you now. Because each new product this year has a lot of exciting features, I'll start by giving you a quick overview of what we're launching at the show. That'll make it easy to skip through the video directly to the products you're most interested in. First we have the Blackmagic Duplicator, which has been designed to solve the problems of delivering Ultra HD content direct to your customers. It features 25 slots for SD cards and all you need to do is press record and it'll save in real time direct to HDX5 files in all formats up to 2160p60. Next we have the new Blackmagic Video Assist 4K. And this is a new model of our popular HD Video Assist. However, it's also got a larger 7 inch screen and dual Ultra HD recorders. It features two SD cards so you can swap cards while recording and it also supports both regular SD cards as well as the new high speed UHS-2 cards. The UHS-2 card support allows recording in Ultra HD for amazing quality and is also extremely low noise analog audio inputs so you can bypass the camera audio. Today we are also launching the new Blackmagic Multiview 4, which is a compact 4-way Multiview. Multiview 4 is exciting because it's the same size as a Terranex Mini, and because it supports Ultra HD displays, you can get full resolution HD on each view. Each input has full resync, so it handles any combination of SD, HD and Ultra HD on any input all at the same time. Next we have two incredibly small microconverters that are perfect for monitoring using televisions or projectors, and for converting cameras and computers to SDI. Microconverters have the same USB connection for power that smartphones use, so they're very flexible as you can power them from a TV or a computer. With the launch of high-speed Thunderbolt 3 running at 40 gigabits a second, we also have a new model of Ultra Studio 4K Extreme to take advantage of that speed. We also have Decklink Duo 2, a new multi-channel capture and playback card at the show. This new capture card is most suited to developers, and it'll capture and playback up to four channels of HD video up to 1080p60 all at the same time. One of the most exciting announcements is our new Ursa Studio Viewfinder, which lets you turn an Ursa Mini into a fully professional studio camera. The new Studio Viewfinder is amazing, and it's got the most amazing design with incredible flexibility in how you can position and use the viewfinder. We also have a new software update that adds all the features from our popular studio cameras into Ursa Mini. So this combination makes a fantastic live camera. One of the really crazy things we've done at the show is a new SDI Arduino shield for camera control. Now you can use a common Arduino to build your own CCU, and with only a few lines of code, you can make our studio cameras do anything you want. This year, we're also going to be showing a whole new operating system and user interface that we've been developing for Ursa Mini. What we've done is completely replace the code in the camera. So what you get is really a whole new camera and a much more refined, elegant, and modern camera. This new user interface is much faster to use and will let us add more features into the camera quicker as we take advantage of the Ursa Mini's fast processing power. We also have a new DaVinci Resolve 12.5. And while our main focus is to add lots of small refinements, We've also added a lot of major new features too. This DaVinci Resolve update includes new noise reduction, new lens distortion correction, better editing, more effects, and even better color grading tools. Another exciting update we have this year is new Atem software that lets you control any HyperDeck Studio directly from your Atem switcher. This software makes HyperDeck Studio look like a media player, and you can even sync the playback timing to a switcher transition. Lastly, this year we'll be showing a new keycode reader and optical audio pickup for our Cintel film scanners. We've sold over 100 film scanners in only a few months, and these customers have been very happy with the real-time performance and the image quality. What we did not expect was that the Cintel scanner would help revive original film production using motion picture film. So to make this post-production workflow possible, we've developed a key code reader so the film can be traced back and edited properly. So that's a quick overview of what we have new at the show. And now I'd love to go into more details of each new product. If you want to go to any specific product in this video, just skip forward a little so you can get to the one you want to see. The Blackmagic Duplicator 4K was designed to solve the biggest problem we see the television production industry faces today. The problem is how do we get Ultra HD content to customers and let the customers take advantage of the big screen Ultra HD televisions they've been buying? The Blackmagic Duplicator 4K solves that problem by letting you record in real time high quality H.265 onto 25 separate SD cards that you can sell to your customers. Over the last few years, we've converted our whole product line to new Ultra HD models that also have better design and better features, even if you only need HD. Our customers have these wonderful Ultra HD products and often run them in Ultra HD, but use the down-converted HD outputs for final program mastering. But they cannot get the Ultra HD content to customers, which is a shame, as the quality is amazing. So once we'd completed changing our entire product line to new Ultra HD models, we started thinking about the problem of Ultra HD distribution. Originally, we assumed distribution would get taken care of by other companies, such as internet streaming companies. However, it's been slower than we hoped, but it still doesn't help individual production companies. How do you get your content to customers in Ultra HD? How do you do that right now, today? That's what the Blackmagic Duplicator 4K is designed to do. It lets you record onto 25 cheap SD cards in amazing Ultra HD in the new H6.5 format. 
The Blackmagic duplicator records in real time, so it solves another big problem, and that's how to pay for your production work. How can you make money from your live productions when the customs are still there? The Blackmagic duplicator solves this problem because you can sell the content the moment the event is finished, and the customers are most excited to buy it. This means you can now simply sell your programming direct to customers for money. Imagine being able to sell content to customers as well as give the performers a copy of the event they're involved in. I think it would be amazing to be able to shoot a multi-camera wedding and at the end of the night give everyone a copy of the wedding video. You could even use the Blackmagic Duplicator 4K to give all players and sports teams a copy for review after the game. The Duplicator could be used at sales conferences to give attendees a copy of the presentations to take with them. It really has such a wide range of uses. The Blackmagic Duplicator is an incredibly strong rack mount machined metal design that's only a single rack unit in size. It features 25 SD card slots along the front panel and the record controls are located on the right hand side. There's even an LCD for monitoring input video and audio levels. On the back panel is a 12G SDI input with loop through output plus power and remote connections. The remote out lets you daisy chain duplicators so you can keep adding extra capacity and start them all recording at the same time. The Blackmagic Duplicator 4K is packed with powerful features such as its HD65 hardware encoder. With four times as many pixels than HD, if you try to use the older HD64 compressed format, the file will become four times as large and the storage would cost much more. However, to deal with the higher resolutions of Ultra HD video, HD65 compression was developed specifically for Ultra HD distribution. What this means is we can save Ultra HD, even at higher frame rates, into files that are not much bigger than the HD files were when using the older HD64 format. The HD65 codec in the Blackmagic Duplicator 4K has been developed wholly in house and is extremely high quality. We're also working on adding a HD64 codec for compatibility when duplicating in HD, and that'll be available later in the year as an update. Another powerful feature is the append record button, which lets you continue to record on the end of a previous recording. Just say you were doing a multi-camera wedding and you wanted to stop so you could relocate from the ceremony to the reception. The append record feature lets you give customers a single file of a complete program that's easy to watch. Append record is vital to make sure you don't pass your customers a mess of separate recordings. Instead, they get one nice single file of the event. With the loop through SDI and remote output port, you can cascade duplicators and keep adding capacity if you need to sell more than 25 SD cards. Each unit just loops from the previous unit, and each duplicator adds an extra 25 cards of capacity. With simple SD cards as the record medium, you get very low cost storage, and that means you can make more money from each sale. The SD cards are very thin, so each duplicator can fit more of them across the front panel, plus they present well to customers in a printed wallet. Plus, SD cards are very compatible as virtually all modern computers have SD card storage slots built in. The SDI connections on the Blackmagic Duplicator are the latest 12G SDI that auto-switch all SD, HD and Ultra HD formats up to the high frame rate 2160p60. This means you could even supply cards to customers in different formats if you connect some duplicators via a standards converter such as Terranix Express. Selling SD cards after an event is a much better way to work from your customer's point of view. Recently, one of the Blackmagic design staff attended a school concert for her kids and after the show, it took six weeks to get an old SD DVD of the event. If you're busy doing production, how long will it take to get copies of your events to your customers? Will I even bother to order a couple of days later? This is quite common, and there are still people selling standard definition DVDs because Blu-ray was not as widely adopted as the original DVD format was. When we purchased a Blu-ray player, it took 30 seconds just to open the disc tray and another five minutes to load the codex so the disc would play. Is it any wonder that the Blu-ray format was not as popular as the original DVD format? With the Blackmagic Duplicator 4K, you can just sell a simple SD card with a program on it. It's simple and the customers don't have to buy a new player. The files can be played on any Windows 10 computer and some Ultra HD televisions can also play the files directly. We think the Blackmagic Duplicator 4K is the best way to help you make money from your live production work. Can you imagine if you get a few crowd shots during your program and your customers can see themselves in a copy of the event they attended? Imagine if your customers can show their kids concerts they attended when they were young and even see themselves in the crowd. It's very exciting, and we cannot wait to see the kind of events the new Blackmagic Duplicator 4K can be used for. The Blackmagic Duplicator 4K is available now and in stock for $1,995. The next product we have at the show this year is a new Blackmagic Video Assist 4K. This new model of Video Assist 4K lets you add a bright 7-inch monitor and broadcast quality recorder to any SDI or HDMI camera. By adding a Video Assist to a DSLR camera, you can get a nice large screen that ensures you get a perfect focus every time. Video Assist has built-in focus aids such as focus peaking and focus zoom. You also get a histogram to help set exposure. Because Video Assist has built-in recorders, you can bypass the low quality video files or even tape-based recorders in many cameras. The Video Assist uses high quality ProRes and DNX recording, 
so you get great quality and full compatibility with all editing software. You also get much longer recording times because Video Assist 4K features two SD card slots, so you can change cards while you're recording. That's vital when you're doing an interview and you can't stop recording just to change a media card. Now you don't have to. You can even trigger Video Assist from your camera as it supports SDI and HDMI triggers, or can even trigger recording when the timecode runs. Of course, the quality problems with many cameras is not just limited to the video, and audio is often also poor quality. DSLR cameras often have bad microphones and annoying automatic gain controls. They also have poor audio specifications from a professional point of view. The new Blackmagic Video Assist 4K features two analog audio inputs with fan and power that are connected to an incredibly low noise HD audio circuit. This means you can connect high end microphones and mixers via the bounced mini XLR connectors and completely bypass the camera audio for amazing results. It's like Blackmagic Video Assist 4K has a professional audio recorder built in. And with over 128 dB of audio noise floor, audio engineers will love it. Of course, the big screen with built-in recorder is perfect for any kind of monitoring as it's extremely portable. It's great for tech monitoring, or it can even be used as a second recorder for ProRes when you're recording RAW in the camera, such as on a Blackmagic Ursa Mini. It's a great companion to a micro cinema camera because you can use it as a portable settings monitor, or even as a recorder for Micro Studio Camera 4K. You can also use it for when you're unable to get near the camera because it's positioned remotely. Just connect a long cable to the Video Assist. With Blackmagic Video Assist 4K, you get a true professional monitor and recorder that's in a small handheld design. It's designed for machine metal, so it's very tough. And with mounting points along the top and the bottom, you can mount it any way you need. There's a small kickstand that lets you stand it up. And with both SDI and HDMI connections, it's also a great portable player for reviewing shots. There's support for two batteries. And Video Assist will intelligently draw from a single battery first so you can change batteries without interrupting the recordings. The LCD features bright backlighting and the viewing angle is very wide making the touchscreen controls easy to use. The design on the inside is just as professional, with the latest technology 6G SDI in and out on full-size connectors as well as HDMI 2.0 in and out. There's also a LAN connector for external control options in addition to the SDI and HDMI record triggers. Also included is an upgradable hardware codec with a selection between ProRes Poxy, ProRes LT, ProRes 422, ProRes 422HQ, and DNX HD. A 3.5mm audio output is included so you can plug in headphones for audio monitoring, and the Video Assist 4K also includes a speaker for playback. When it comes to the built-in recorder, Video Assist 4K includes support for the latest technology UHS-2 cards, so you get fast speeds for recording to Ultra HD. UHS-2 cards are extremely fast, but you can also read them in conventional SD card slots on computers, as they are fully backwards compatible. This is so much better than the old way of recording and cameras, where the files were some kind of unusual custom format that did not handle the post-production process well. Plus, the quality is amazing in professional 10-bit quality. Because there's no inter-frame compression, shuttle and editing is very fast in the timeline. Adding Video Assist to any camera will increase its features and make a great upgrade for your rig. There are two models of Video Assist, the 5-inch model that records in SD and HD, and the 7-inch model that records in SD, HD and Ultra HD. One fun secret is even though the 5-inch model does not record Ultra HD, it does have 6G SDI connections, so you can still monitor in Ultra HD. We hope Video Assist can become part of your workflow, and we think it'll pay for itself on its first job. The new Blackmagic Video Assist 4K is available now and in stock for $8.95. Next we have the new Blackmagic MultiView 4, which is a new and extremely powerful MultiView monitoring converter. Blackmagic MultiView 4 allows you to eliminate the complexity of multiple monitors, by using a single monitor to view four SDI video feeds simultaneously. Each input view is totally independent of the others, so each view can have a completely different video format and frame rate. Blackmagic MultiView is the first MultiView to support Ultra HD, so this means you can use an Ultra HD monitor and get full resolution HD on each view. Imagine using a big screen television to get incredibly large MultiView displays with full resolution on each view. Blackmagic MultiView is a fantastic solution for when you need lots of monitoring but you don't have a lot of space. It's great for live production, mobile production, and in your studio. It's a truly professional design, perfect for broadcasters because it also includes on-screen labels as well as accurate level meters. The audio level meters conform to the VU audio meter specification with all the correct blue sticks so you can use them in professional installations. A great advantage of Blackmagic MultiView 4 is it's the same physical size as our Terranex Mini 12G SDI converters. What this means is you can use it on the desktop with the included rubber feet, or use it in the Terranex Mini rack shelf to install it in an equipment rack. You can also change the settings via switches on the front panel, which is perfect if you're hiding the converter behind a monitor or on a cable tray. There's also an Ethernet connection on the rear panel, 
so you can connect it to your network for remote administration on Windows and Mac OS X. The Blackmagic MultiView 4 also supports adding the Terranix Mini Smart Panel if you want to change settings using easy to use menus. What's exciting is even if you're using the output in Ultra HD, if you plug in an older HD HDMI monitor, it will down convert to HD automatically. Blackmagic MultiView 4 has lots of features and it's much more powerful than a simple converter style MultiView products. With resync on each input, each view is the same as an independent video monitor and can be any video standard completely independent of the other inputs. That means you can connect any combination of NTSC, PAL, 720p, 1080i, 1080p up to 1080p60, and 2160p up to 2160p30 all at once. Plus each SDI input has looped through SDI output, so you can loop it out to other equipment such as switches. There's both 6G SDI out as well as HDMI out, so you can connect it directly to broadcast monitors or consumer televisions and video projectors without extra converters. You can also turn on overlaid audio meters, labels, and borders depending on your needs. You can then use the MultiView utility to customize the labels and select which video input you want to use as the embedded audio output. The MultiView 4 model includes a built-in AC power supply, plus the Ethernet connection supports power over Ethernet, so you can use it as a backup power supply. Of course, one of the biggest advantages of Blackmagic MultiView is the support for Ultra HD. Even if you're not using Ultra HD, you can still connect a big Ultra HD television for amazing high resolution monitoring. That's because Ultra HD is four times the resolution of HD. So with four HD sources on a single Ultra HD display, each view is full resolution HD. This means you can use very large televisions to create amazing emission control style monitoring setups while retaining extremely sharp images. What's also a nice trick is you can plug one multi-view into another and then create extra views in any custom arrangement you need. This is so much better than the old way with a wall full of monitors that cost a lot of money. In many ways, the large screen televisions available at your local store have completely transformed broadcast monitoring and Blackmagic MultiView makes this easy. We think Blackmagic MultiView 4 is the perfect solution for high density monitoring and its small size makes it perfect for broadcast trucks or hidden behind monitors. The new Blackmagic MultiView 4 is available now and in stock for only $4.95. This year we also have some new HDMI converters that offer incredible price and performance. The new Blackmagic microconverters come in two models, SDI to HDMI and HDMI to SDI. They're extremely tiny converters and they're not much bigger than the cables that connect to them. What's also exciting is that the power connections to the converters use the same USB connector found on smartphones. So we can power them from a TV or a computer. We include a full power supply with the international AC plug adapters, but you can really use all kinds of power supplies or even USB battery packs. These new microconverters support 3G SDI, so they support all SD and HD video formats up to 1080p60 and they're full 10-bit quality. Two channels of embedded audio is also supported in both SDI and HDMI, so a single cable will handle both the video and the audio. The microconverter SDI to HDMI makes it incredibly easy to turn televisions and video projectors into SDI broadcast monitors. The microconverter HDMI to SDI is perfect for converting computers or consumer cameras into SDI feeds for professional use. A really nice solution is to use a HDMI to SDI converter and an SDI cable up to a video projector with a microconverter SDI to HDMI. We think these converters are a great solution when you want to add HDMI devices into SDI systems, but you want to keep the costs low or for when the space is tight. With microconverters, you can easily add them wherever you need. But Blackmagic Design's microconverters are just the entry level of a whole range of professional converters that we have. If you spend just a little more, then you can select from one of our very popular mini converter products. There's a wide range of mini converters with models for HDMI, analog component, composite, optical fiber, SDI distribution, sync generation, and more. If you need to add some Ultra HD support, then there's also a similar range of 4K models with 6G SDI support. All the features of the 3G SDI mini converter models are available in the 4K mini converter models, plus one new feature called HDMI Instant Lock. HDMI Instant Lock allows the mini converter SDI to HDMI 4K model to instantly lock when an SDI input is connected. HDMI televisions and projectors make great monitoring, but what's painful is they take a long time to lock when a HDMI input is connected. HDMI Instant Lock fixes that because it keeps the HDMI signal active to the display, so when an SDI input is connected, it can lock instantly. It's extremely fast and works when the new SDI input is the same format as the previous SDI format. Lock times are about one frame. If you're monitoring from a router using the SDI to HDMI 4K converter, as you switch sources, the new sources are instantly visible. It's just like using a clean switch. If you already have a mini converter SDI to HDMI 4K, then you can add this new feature by downloading the latest converter software which is available now. Now if you need the ultimate in converters, then our Terranix Mini models are easily the world's most advanced broadcast converters. The technology packed into Terranix Minis is amazing. 
and they also include an innovative design so they can be desktop mounted or rack mounted. The Terranix Mini family are fully 12G SDI, so they handle all video formats from SD, 720p HD, 1080i HD, 1080p HD to 60p, and 2160 Ultra HD up to 60p. Not only that, but in the latest converters update, the Terranix Mini SDI to HDMI model now includes a full 33.3D lookup table. A 33.3D lookup table is extremely high precision and is targeted at our Hollywood film customers who need a lookup table for their prime grading and edit monitors. However, it's also perfect for use on set because you could use the 3D LUT to load a custom camera at gamma table for on-set monitoring. Two separate 3D LUTs can be loaded via the Terranix utility software from a Windows or Mac OS X computer connected using Ethernet or USB. If you have a Terranix Mini Smart Panel, you can use the 1 and the 2 buttons to enable or disable the 3D LUTs. Terranix Mini SDI to HDMI supports LUTs in the most common formats, and DaVinci Resolve can save grades as 3D LUTs, so you can even create custom looks. That's exciting because the SDI loop through output can be enabled to have 3D LUT processing applied to it. This means Terranix Mini SDI to HDMI can operate as a full 33.3D lookup table SDI processor, even if you don't use it as an SDI to HDMI converter. If you already have a Terranix Mini SDI to HDMI, then you can download the latest converter software and add these new features. So we think the new microconverters, plus the new features in our other converter models, means you have a great choice for conversion. No matter what type of conversion you need, Blackmagic Design will have a model to handle it. The new microconverter SDI to HDMI and the microconverter HDMI to SDI are in stock and available today for $85 each. Plus, this price includes the power supply. The new software installer for adding HDMI instant lock and the 3D lookup tables is also available now as a free update from the Blackmagic Design website. We have some new capture and playback products at the show, and the most exciting is a new Thunderbolt 3 version of our Ultra Studio 4K Extreme. The previous model was limited to Thunderbolt 2, which was not fast enough to get the highest quality 4K formats when working in RGB or stereoscopic. This limited the product for high-end feature film work when connected to Thunderbolt computers and using editing and color correction software such as DaVinci Resolve. Customers could use the PCI Express cable connection, but the cable lengths are short, and the cable and PCI plug-in card cost extra to buy. This new model of Ultra Studio 4K Extreme solves that problem and features Thunderbolt 3 running at a massive 40 gigabits per second speed. That's fast enough for the most extreme high bit depth HDR uncompressed RGB 4K and stereoscopic formats that high-end feature film customers use. The PCI Express connection is still included for operating systems such as Linux and Windows, where you might still want to connect directly to the computer's slot. Thunderbolt 3 has also been appearing on Windows computers, so this model is perfect as Thunderbolt 2 is not as common on Windows computers. Of course, Mac OS X customers can use this new model too, just by using a Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter cable. However, with both Thunderbolt 2 and Thunderbolt 3 models available, you can simply choose which one you want. The new models still feature the same attractive machine metal design that can be desktop mounted, or if you use the rack adapters, can be rack mounted too. This new model also retains all the incredibly powerful features and the huge number of video and audio connections that the original model has. With Ultra Studio 4K Extreme, you get virtually every kind of video and audio connection that has been invented over the last 50 years. Of course, Ultra Studio 4K Extreme also has the fully customizable and extremely powerful hardware codec built in. The hardware codec can run real-time compression into advanced H.265 compression even in high frame rate Ultra HD. This means you can capture directly to H.265 or use streaming software to live stream over the internet in incredible quality. So Ultra Studio 4K Extreme 3 is an amazing quality post-production I.O. product, but it's also an incredible quality encoder. It does everything in the one design. It's amazing this is possible, as in the past you would have had to purchase an expensive encoding card just to do it. Now encoding is just built in. Of course, Ultra Studio 4K Extreme 3 has been designed to be the perfect high-end capture and playback solution for DaVinci Resolve 12.5. It handles all the capture and playback requirements in all DaVinci Resolve frame buffer formats on Mac, Windows, and Linux, and is the ultimate I.O. solution for your studio. Ultra Studio 4K Extreme 3 is the same price as the Thunderbolt 2 model at only $2,995. Next, we have Decklink Duo 2, which is a smaller version of the new Decklink Quad 2 card we released at IBC. Decklink Duo 2 solves the problem of developers who want to design multi-channel HD systems with one simple card. This new model also handles 3G SDI so it supports high HD frame rates up to 1080p60 on each channel all at the same time. Decklink Duo 2 does this because while the old model was two channels, this new model is actually four complete separate channels in the one card. These two extra channels are normally hidden, but they can be turned on when needed by the software developer or in the Decklink control panel. Decklink Duo 2 is very easy to install. 
as it's a simple PCI Express plug-in card, and so it plugs into Windows and Linux computers. It uses the same Blackmagic Design desktop video SDK, so if you have any of our other capture cards, then this new model will just work. This means you can develop and test one build of your software, but deploy as many channels as you need on a single system. The new DeckLink Duo 2 is the same price as the older model at $495, and it's in stock and available now. And now for the first of our camera news. In this NAB we have some exciting upgrades for our OSA Mini digital film cameras for live production. This includes a new professional studio viewfinder, as well as a software update for OSA Mini to add all the features required for studio camera use. First I'd love to show you the new Blackmagic OSA Studio Viewfinder, which will transform OSA Mini into a truly professional studio camera. Ever since we originally built our popular Blackmagic Studio camera, customers have asked us for something designed for the extreme high end. Customers wanted us to add a different lens mount and B4 lens control connector to the Blackmagic Studio camera. However, we thought while this is a good idea, those high-end customers would really want more viewfinder controls and to be able to change the angle of the viewfinder. So we realized that the Blackmagic Studio camera, while a great studio camera, was not designed to do what these very high-end broadcast customers wanted. We decided to upgrade the Ursa Mini to include all the features the customers asked for, and the result would be a much more professional studio camera. Then customers would get the lens mount and lens control they need, but the viewfinder would be adjustable, and they'd also get the studio camera control features. The Blackmagic Studio Viewfinder is the first part of this, and it completely transforms the Ursa Mini into a professional studio camera. It looks amazing, and it simply plugs into where the normal viewfinder would connect on the front of the camera. It's also powered from the camera. The ergonomics of the viewfinder were designed for maximum comfort, which is vital when working on shoots where the camera team can be standing for hours at a time. When we designed this viewfinder, the number one feature we worked on was to make the best articulated mounting that we'd seen on any viewfinder at any cost. These joints have an amazing range of tension adjustment, so you can set them to the perfect resistance you need. So what this means is you can pan and tilt the viewfinder to the position you need, which is vital when the camera is high up and you need to tilt it down. But it also means that you can cover sports, such as golf, where you need to grab the viewfinder and move the camera while holding onto the viewfinder towards you. The joints can be so precisely tuned to your tension setting that they will smoothly pivot as the camera moves. The Blackmagic Ursa Studio Viewfinder has a modern design with a nice large tally indicator so the talent can clearly see which camera is on air. There is a customizable camera number that can be installed over the tally indicator, so the camera number is clearly visible. The viewfinder is on a quick release mount, so you can remove it if you need the camera to go off tripod quickly, and it makes setup very fast. And you can even keep the standard viewfinder on the camera and change between them quickly if required. Each tension knob smoothly moves through a wide tension range, and there is a knob on each side, so you can use one side to lock and the other side to set tension. This is fantastic for people who are left-handed, as you can lock the side you want and use the other side for the tension setting. Tension knobs each side of the viewfinder is the best way to do this, because using one side to unlock does not alter the tension setting on the other side. There are knobs for controlling brightness and contrast, and also a knob for focus peaking, so you can set the level you need. Each knob has been designed for use by your fingertips or for adjustment from the side, which is important when using the sunshade. There's a menu dial for navigating viewfinder settings, plus three assignable function buttons which you can program to give you access to common functions instantly. There's a sun shield included and a tally indicator under the sun shield, as well as above the sun shield for the camera operator. The viewfinder is an all metal design, so it's able to handle years of use where it can operate in all kinds of indoors and outdoors conditions. When you use it with the Ursa Mini, the camera will actually send camera information via the SDI connection to the viewfinder for on-screen displays. This lets you change the on-screen displays from the viewfinder itself, so you don't need to go to the camera menus to do it. The Blackmagic Ursa Studio Viewfinder will be available in Q3 from Blackmagic Design Resellers worldwide. Next I'll describe the new software update for adding studio camera features into the Ursa Mini cameras. This upgrade turns Ursa Mini into a fantastic high-end studio camera because it adds all the features broadcasters loved about a Blackmagic Studio camera. When we launched the studio camera, broadcasters loved the color corrector, the lens control, talkback, tally, and the ability to change settings all via the external SDI. This provided a very easy way to control a camera and the color corrector has really increased the level of creativity that can be used on a live production. The color corrector in the studio camera is the same as DaVinci Resolve's primary color corrector, so it works the same way creatively. Now with the camera software 3.2 update, all the studio camera features have been added into the Ursa Mini. All you need to do is download the software update, and now Ursa Mini will have the studio camera features. The control features added include camera ID, the camera control, tally, talkback, reference timing, color correction, detail level, color bars, lens control, and more. This update also adds 1080 HD interlaced video and a video lookup table on the SDI output, so you can use the camera with any broadcast switcher. Using the camera with this update is the same. 
but there are some new items in the menus, such as camera number, which you set so the camera can be controlled. Most of the studio camera features lie dormant until you plug the camera's SDI program input into a switcher that supports the SDI control protocol. Then the lens can be fully controlled remotely and the camera's built-in color corrector can be used to set the look you desire. The headphone connection will now become the TalkBack headset connection and you'll be able to hear the director. Because Ursa Mini's headphone socket is iPhone headset compatible, you can even push the headset button and talk back to the director. The viewfinder record indicator will now become a tally indicator and when your camera is on air, the viewfinder light will illuminate. Any settings the switcher operator wants to change can be done remotely, so the camera operator can focus on the live action. What's amazing is because Ursa Mini is a digital film camera with a large Super 35 sensor, the images look like no other studio camera available. Can you imagine how your live event will look in digital film quality and with professional DaVinci Resolve primary color correction on the images? There is just so much range. And if you really want to see what wide dynamic range can do, try an indoor shot with a window. It's amazing to see what you can do. You can even use digital film PL mount lenses. And if they have the lens control connection, you can plug that in and control the lens externally too. You can also use B4 broadcast HD lenses if you want, simply by adding a B4 lens mount to the PL model and plugging the lens into the control connector. If you still want that same quality but you're on a lower budget, you can use the Ursa Mini EF and get the same external lens control. Using an EF lens on a studio camera is not just about low cost, because you can take advantage of the many interesting lenses available for some very creative looks. Plus this update includes new color science for both Ursa Mini models, so the 4K sensor models now have a similar look to the 4.6K sensor models. This means the two different sensors are now a much better match, which is good if you're using both cameras on the same shoot or in a live production situation. DaVinci Resolve will read the metadata from the Ursa Mini 4K automatically and select the correct color science. We think it's time that broadcasters can get the same amazing digital film quality for live events that Hollywood has only had access to in the past. So let me show you how all this works. Here I have a broadcast lens on an Ursa Mini running the new Camera Update 3.2 software. The SDI program input is connected from one of our Atem live production switches and it's generating camera control data on the SDI link to the camera. You can even control the camera with a HD feed as the program input video standard does not need to match the video standard of the camera. Now when the camera is on air, the tally light will illuminate on the viewfinder. There's also a program button so you can switch to the video input source on the viewfinder and the built-in LCD at the push of a button. The camera will receive all control information on the program input and all I need to do is control the camera from the Atem switcher software. As you can see, when I adjust the control, the lens is now moving and being controlled externally. I can adjust the black level and iris with a single control and the lens iris is moving and the camera black level is being set. I can also switch over to the color corrector controls and use the color corrector. It really works the same as DaVinci Resolve, so you can use any DaVinci colorist. What's so nice about the primary color corrector from DaVinci is the highlights roll off really nicely if you want a crushed look. Because it's a DaVinci Resolve primary color corrector, it operates in YRGB, so you can adjust the color bounce without chasing gain changes. The YRGB color corrector also lets you do some really nice looks, like altering the Y gain separately to really bring out a clean look to objects that are white in the shot. All this means you get a studio camera with much more creative control than possible before, but with all the professional operational features too. Plus, because Ursa Mini is a modern Ultra HD camera with 12G SDI, you get all the modern capabilities such as high frame rate Ultra HD. Our Atem switches, even the Sub-1000 Atem Television Studio model, all output full SDI camera control, so using these powerful features is easy. If you want professional talkback at the switcher end that's compatible with our studio cameras, then you can also use our Atem talkback converter. The Atem Talkback Converter uses channel 15 and 16 of the SDI link to provide talkback for up to 8 cameras and it's a full 12G SDI design. If you're looking for an incredibly tiny camera for tough locations where you need to hide the camera on set, then our Micro Studio Camera also has SDI camera control. The Micro Studio Camera also has the same built-in color corrector, tally and even talkback. The new Camera Update 3.2 that adds camera control to Ursa Mini is available today and you can download it free from the Blackmagic Design website. Next we have the new Blackmagic Arduino 3G SDI Shield, which lets you use an Arduino to customize your own studio camera control solutions. When we developed the Blackmagic SDI camera control protocol, we wanted it to be open, so we documented it in our instruction manual. This is great and many manufacturers are supporting it, plus it's built into our cameras, our switches, deck link cards and even our video system viewfinders. However, if you want to design with the SDI camera control protocol, you have to develop SDI products to do it, so it's a bit hard for most broadcasters to use. So the Blackmagic Arduino 3G SDI Shield lets you use a simple Arduino to control cameras, so you can easily build your own custom controllers. If you haven't heard of Arduino before, then Arduino is a popular open source electronics prototyping platform 
It's based on easy to use hardware and software. Arduino is designed for hardware designers, hobbyists, and anyone interested in creating projects. Arduino is designed to be as flexible as possible and very low cost. Arduino is similar to Raspberry Pi, however it's simpler and more designed for hardware people, while Raspberry Pi is more targeted to software engineers. Another big benefit of Arduino is it's open source, so you can just download the PCB design files and make your own. There's hundreds of people building Arduinos. If you want to know more about Arduino, you can go to arduino.cc or some of the most popular manufacturers such as Sparkfun or Adafruit. Using the Blackmagic Arduino 3GSDI shield is easy, as all you need to do is get an Arduino, download the IDE from arduino.cc, and then load the sample code. The sample code shows you how the Arduino just communicates to the Blackmagic Arduino 3GSDI shield, and the shield sends the commands to the camera. The expansion boards are called shields in the Arduino world, and in this example I have added an extra custom-made shield with a joystick control on top of the SDI shield. We built this joystick board ourselves, and just milled it out on an other mill. I then plugged that into the top of the Blackmagic Arduino 3GSDI shield. Now this sample code detects when I move the joystick and it sends the iris and black level controls to the camera just like a CCU does. As you can see as I move the joystick, the software in Arduino is sending camera control commands to the shield and the camera is responding. But you can put any kinds of buttons and knobs on your Arduino shield and then build any kind of custom camera control solution you need. Writing the code to send the commands to the camera is also very easy. Arduino programs are called sketches and they're very easy to write. As you can see an example here of sending a command to the camera, there's the camera number and the rest of the numbers here are the protocol command. In this case, we're telling the camera to perform an auto iris. The codes here are documented in the ATEM manual, so you can just look them up and then send them like this. Here is another example of using Tally and we've modified the basic blink sketch to blink camera one's Tally light. You can see how easy this is. There is lots of examples in the Arduino world on using buttons and knobs. All you need to do is add this type of code to your buttons and then build your own CCU. The Blackmagic Arduino 3G SDI shield comes as a simple double-sided SDI board and it also powers the Arduino. It has a separate USB connector so you can update the software if we release new features in the future. The Blackmagic Arduino 3G SDI shield only uses the I2C bus, so you could even connect it via a cable to the shield if you needed to fit into a custom enclosure. This also means you could add it to other microcontrollers, such as a Raspberry Pi, as it's really just a simple I2C device. All the commands in the instruction manual for the studio cameras are supported, and you can even use the manual as a reference. It really is a lot of fun to use, and we don't know if we designed it for professional use, or really just because it's a lot of fun and we wanted to play with it. However, the Arduino 3G SDI shield, when combined with a new OSA Mini Viewfinder and Studio Software Update, is an incredibly powerful combination. You could even buy an old obsolete CCU, and then remove the old electronics and replace them with a new Arduino design to transform it into a modern CCU. The Blackmagic Arduino 3G SDI shield will be shipping in a few months' time for $95. Next we're going to be demonstrating a whole new operating system and user interface for our Ursa Mini cameras. Ever since we originally developed our first camera, we've been adding features, but it's also meant that the old user interface is getting a little bit overloaded. We really want to be able to add features in an elegant user interface that's fast and easy to use, to really take advantage of the flexibility of a software-based camera. But there's so much more than the new user interface, as it's also a whole new operating system for the Ursa Mini camera. There's a lot of extra power in the Ursa Mini design that we've only just started to unlock, and until now, that power has been hidden. Now we're going to unlock it. So let's have a look. As you can see, it's a very clean looking user interface and all the controls are on the screen. So to change any setting, you just touch it. For example, we just selected the color temperature setting. And as you can see, it's adjustable right from the screen without going into the menus. You can change the color temperature and also use the slider to change it by small amounts. That means you can fine tune the color temperature very quickly. If you want to adjust audio, then just touch the audio meters and now you can change levels. If you rotate the audio knob, the adjustments are also displayed. A good example is if you want to change ISO because the light levels have changed. Then all you need to do is go and touch the ISO and you can adjust it directly. Another good example is lens control. Look, I'm going to just select the iris and step through the f-stops, or just slide the iris open and close with my finger. With this new operating system, we can now add all the intelligent features we have dreamed of adding. A good example is shutter angles. Setting shutter angles to eliminate flicker from lights can be tricky but the new Ursa Mini operating system makes it easy. All you need to do is select the power frequency for the country you're in, and in the menu you can select it between 50 hertz or 60 hertz. I'll select 60 hertz for the US. Now when we select the shutter angle in the LCD, settings are recommended to eliminate flicker from lighting. The recommendations are calculated for you. It even works if you overcrank the frame rate to higher rates. All the items on the main screen can be adjusted this way, and it's much faster and much more intelligent to use. Meter data has also been greatly improved, and now the meter data page is better laid out so it's faster to use on real jobs. Plus, when you touch a setting, you can see the meter data keyboard only shows what can be entered, and also has some predictions of what you might want. 
When you do need to go into settings, the buttons are now very large and very easy to press. There's also a lot more settings as we can page through the options and select what we need. You can also now open up a media status page so you can see very clearly how much space you have on your memory cards. Another new feature is you can save custom settings so they can be recalled instantly. That's great for when you're doing different kinds of work. The new user interface also makes it easy to set the customizable function buttons on the camera so you can access specific functions fast. One of the biggest reasons for doing this design is we want to be able to easily localize and we'll be following up this release with extra languages soon. Of course, this change has been designed to enable us to add new features, and so there will be some exciting new capabilities when we release this update. The biggest new change is we're introducing 3D lookup tables for the internal LCD and the SDI video output. What this means is you'll be able to load custom color looks, and you can store up to six 3D LUTs in the camera's internal flash memory. 3D LUTs are loaded from the CFast media card in the camera, and ERSA Mini will read LUT files from most software, including DaVinci Resolve's 3D LUT format. This new software update will be on display at NAB, so please gun by so you can try it for yourself. This new software update will be available towards mid-year as a free update for all models of Ursa Mini cameras. We also have a new update for DaVinci Resolve this year, and I'd love to show you some of the new features that it has. We've called this release DaVinci Resolve 12.5 because we wanted to focus the engineering team on lots of the small things that can often get overlooked. What we really wanted was to spend time on the hundreds of very small refinements that'll help every user every day. It's the little things that can make the difference between liking a product and really loving a product. DaVinci Resolve is a very important tool, and editors and colorists spend all their working lives using it, so the little things are very important. In this release of DaVinci Resolve 12.5, there's over a thousand small improvements that'll make editing and color correction more refined. However, we could not really hold the engineering team back, and they did add a bunch of very big features too. So now I'd love to show you some of these new features now. There's been some significant interactivity improvements to the interface, and you can see it and even feel it all through DaVinci. The timeline on the edit page has been upgraded and provides a much smoother experience with extremely responsive controls now. On the color page, the interactivity of the grading controls has been improved even further and feels instant. There's a new variable speed curve integrated with the real-time controls, and this lets you open the timeline controls and real-time curve editor for the clip in the edit timeline. This is a whole new way to see and adjust read times, as changes made to either are fast and graphically displayed. We've added Fusion Connect, and we can now send a clip or a composition of clips direct to Fusion. All you need to do is right click on the Edit Timeline clip, select New Fusion Clip, and the clip will move over to Fusion where you can do the compositing. Once you've rendered your composition, you can then return to the edit, and the clip you rendered will automatically be in the timeline. It's very fast. With Fusion now on both Mac OS X and Windows, we think this is a very powerful combination and will really enhance workflows. In DaVinci Resolve 12.5, there is now metadata on the edit page. All you need to do is select the new metadata icon at the top next to the inspector. Now you can see the metadata palette and any clip you select will automatically display the metadata. There is a new markers feature that includes name, notes and duration markers. Just select a marker and hold option to drag its duration. You can also select M as a keyboard shortcut to add a marker or double M to open a dialog to edit it. We have included improvements to multicam and you can now right click on media pool clips to make a new multicam clip. There is also new options for syncing common angles using camera metadata. You can also name angles sequentially based on file name or camera metadata. A very exciting feature for colorists is there's now Resolve FX tools on the color page. To use them, simply open the open effects window and drag an effect clip like glow, light ray, vortex or mirrors onto a node and make any adjustments you need. It'll be exciting to see what colorists do with this feature as you can create some really surreal looks by combining effects into the color correction nodes. Another big feature in DaVinci Resolve 12.5 Studio is significantly improved noise reduction. Here you can see a noisy clip on the motion effects palette. Just select better in the spatial noise reduction section and adjust lumen chroma thresholds to dramatically reduce the noise. DaVinci Resolve 12.5 Studio also includes new automatic lens correction and we can fix the slight barrel distortion here by clicking analyze to auto correct it. You can then further adjust the correction in the inspector for finer control, but you can also use it as a lens distortion effect which can be very useful. One of the other big features we've added to DaVinci Resolve 12.5 is easy presets for common output formats. This is very useful if you're outputting to destinations such as YouTube or Vimeo, as you can just select the output and start mastering. It's really very fast. One of the other big features in DaVinci Resolve is the new high dynamic range or HDR grading tools built in. This really simplifies grading HDR work and includes high dynamic range cache, node with HDR controls, color transforms, and HDR scope scale for HDR grading. There's also an update available now for our Ultra Studio 4K Extreme and DeckLink 4K Extreme 12G that adds HDR on the HDMI out, 
so you can get a full end-to-end -end solution. Of course, there is also lots more compositing modes, as well as lots of new effects, including more dissolves, more wipes, and lots of other transitions. We've also spent a lot of time in this release solving a range of different kinds of problems by designing new ways of working. One of the biggest problems we found when editing dialogue is cutting against the audio track when you cannot see it. You can drag clips into the timeline to see the audio waveforms, but it's hard when the timeline is at different zoom levels. With DaVinci Resolve 12.5, we've added an audio waveform overlay into the source viewer, and it's at a fixed sample display, so it doesn't change if the clips are longer. Another problem when cutting against dialogue is sometimes you want to keep your edit points away from the dialogue by a specific amount. We've added a new Playhead Shadow feature, and you can select this in the project settings for how many frames width you want. You can also edit titles in place now, and all you need to do is select the clip, and then you can drag to rotate, double click to text to edit, and more. There's also lots of little features in DaVinci Resolve 12.5, where we have focused on the smallest details that we think will really matter to all users. There is now a render bar in the dock icon, so you can see the progress of rendering when DaVinci Resolve is in the background. You can import and export metadata as a comma-separated text file, and you can even export just the clips you've selected. There's a useful playhead position indicator in the scroll bar, so when the playhead is out of range, you can see which way to locate the playhead. You can now also see the audio track name, as it can be displayed on the track mixer now by double-clicking on the track mixer name to see the track number. Another option is to render out with 3-2 pulldown, so you can edit in 2398 frames per second, and then render out at 2997 frames per second for a broadcast master. There are so many more features in DaVinci Resolve 12.5, and we've only described just a few of them here. Please check out the demo video on the DaVinci Resolve website, as it covers some of the new features in much greater detail. The good news is DaVinci Resolve 12.5 is available today as a public beta, so you can download it now and try out some of these new features for yourself. Both the free DaVinci Resolve 12.5 and the paid version DaVinci Resolve Studio 12.5 are in public beta and can be downloaded. We will be releasing this update free of charge for all DaVinci Resolve users. And once again, we want to thank you for all your support. We have over 2 million users now, and the majority of feature films are completed on DaVinci Resolve, so we are very happy with that. We have lots of ideas for the future, so please remember to upgrade to the paid version if you're doing professional work, as that income pays for faster development. Another update we have for this NAB is new software for all Atom switches that lets you control our HyperDeck Studio SSD recorders. This is a very important update, because this software lets a HyperDeck become totally integrated into the switcher workflow. It's very easy to use because HyperDeck really works the same as a media player, and playback can be triggered when you transition to the deck. You can control up to four separate HyperDecks and trigger playback automatically, as well as see file lists and select which clips you want to play. You just click the button for the HyperDeck you want to control, so let's select deck one. In the palette display, you can see the current clip name, the clip length, the current clip time, and the remaining time the clip has to play. Just under this are the transport controls for record, previous clip, play, and next clip. There's also jog and shuttle controls. When recording, the controls will change to a large time code display, and you can click on it to display the record duration. There's also a time remaining for the current disk. If you select the Clips List button, you can see there's a list of clips in playback order on the HyperDeck. You can simply click a clip and go direct to that clip. There's also full transport controls on the hardware panel. That means you can control the decks from the software panel or the hardware panel. If you've selected Auto Roll when you set up the HyperDeck, then whenever it receives a tally to go on air, it will play automatically. This means you can trigger a credit roll or even short clips just by transitioning to them on the switcher. It really becomes an automated spot player. Of course, all these controls can be programmed into macros, so you can fully automate your entire workflow, including using macros to program various playback speeds for instant replays. This new software update for Atom switches is available now as a free update, and there's a lot more features in it than what I've described here. You can download it now from our website. This year we also have a new key code and optical audio pickup for Cintel film scanners. We've been very excited by the film customers who've purchased the Cintel scanners, and they've been using for all kinds of film work. But what's been very surprising is the number of customers who want to use the scanner for original film production work. This is exciting, and the reason for it is partially the love of film, but it's also about taking advantage of the unique looks that only motion picture film can provide. This means these customers need to trace key codes on the film, and so need us to build a key code reader for the scanner. Centel film scanners can post-process the optical audio tracks to recover audio, but we also wanted to provide real-time optical audio pickup as part of that design. Because so many people have been asking about this feature, we would like to show our work in progress at NAB this year. The new Centel audio and key code reader supports reading key codes from both 16mm and 35mm film direct into DaVinci Resolve. The reader also supports 16mm and 35mm optical audio, and what's really nice about this is that it reads in real time, so you get full sound as you play the film. 
The reader just bolts onto the front of the film scanner so it's very easy to install. There's also an adjustment knob for aligning the pickup to the film track. This optical audio and key code reader won't be ready until late in the year. However, we wanted to show people what we've been working on. We think it's important to show our progress on this new feature. So please come and see the Cintel scanner with key code and audio pickup running at the show. It's through your support that we can design these powerful tools and we've always been amazed at the creative work you do with them. We can never thank you enough. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you at the show.